This is ABC 7 News, Chicago's number one news with Jose Sanders. Judy Sue, weather with meteorologist Tracy Butler, and Roz Barron's traffic. This is ABC 7 News this morning. Opening statements begin this morning in the William Belfort trial. He is accused of killing Jennifer Hudson's family member. Another high profile case, this one right here in Chicago, as opening statements are set to begin this morning. William Balfour is charged with killing three members of Jennifer Hudson's family, and the superstar is expected to attend the trial. ABC 7's Jason Knowles live at the courthouse this morning. Jason? Well, good morning. Jennifer Hudson is expected to be here every day for the trial, and that means the media spotlight will be here on the criminal courthouse at 26 in California. There will also be some strict rules inside the courtroom. With all of the publicity surrounding the case, the biggest challenge for Judge Charles Burns is ensuring that William Balfour gets a fair trial. Balfour is charged with the 2008 murder of Jennifer Hudson's mother, brother, and nephew. With the Oscar-winning actress and singer expected in the courtroom, the judge has placed limits on spectators. Anyone interested in watching the trial must register the day before the court session. The judge has also ordered the identities of the 12 jurors and six alternates to remain secret until until after the trial. He's also imposed strict orders to them. Besides not talking about the case until deliberations, they have to avoid watching news reports, reading stories about the trial, or doing anything that would compromise their impartiality. And for the reporters covering the trial, the judge has banned tweeting in his courtroom because he believes they can become a distraction for jurors and witnesses on the stand. The judge has also placed restrictions on the emails reporters can send, saying that they can only send an occasional email to their news organization. Judy and Jose, opening statements are scheduled to begin this morning at 1030. We're live at the Criminal Courthouse at 26 in California. Jason Knowles, ABC 7 News. Now back to both of you. Jason, thank you. Well, criminal defense attorney Thomas Gosco joins us here now in the studio with a closer look at the trial. Good morning to you. Yeah, good, good morning, morning to you. both of you. Uh, Jason mentioned the opening statements today. What are your expectations for those? The, the opening statements are going to be punctuated by the state making their circumstantial evidence case. Remember, there's no direct witness. They're not going to have an eyewitness that comes and points at Mr. Balfour and says he's the one who did it. This is a circumstantial case in that you know, you've got a gun that's found in the weeds. You've got gunshot residue in the car. You've got uh, some lies that Mr. Balfour told to the police and uh, the girlfriend that said that he may have been involved statement from a third party. Those are all things that they're going to piece together into the case to show Mr. Balfour is guilty. Sometimes juries really like that because they get to solve the pieces of the puzzle and don't have to judge the credibility of one witness. Yeah. The defense, on the other hand, is going to be making the point that this is also a circumstantial case, that there is nothing direct that leads them to Mr. Balfour. They also may try and dirty up or the victims or muddy the water in that there was the gun that was stolen from Jennifer Hudson's brother, which was the alleged murder weapon. And he was shot, Mr. Hudson, roughly a couple of weeks before in Gary, refused medical treatment because juries want to know if I'm going to let this guy go, who was it that actually committed this crime? Mm. They want to know, is there mm. someone else out there? That may be a tactic of the defense in this matter to show that there is somebody out there. And if you remember when this first came down, the police thought several people were involved, not sure. just one person. Sure. And there was also the statement from one of the girlfriends from Mr. Balfour that said, you know, he was involved in the killings of the mother and the brother, but not the kid. Oh, so wow. that's something else that, that may come into play here. Well, overall, though, there's, uh, there's overshadowing everything else is the yeah. fact that this is Jennifer Hudson's family. Yes, How is. will her presence uh, affect this whole thing? Well, she said she's going to attend every day. And that's something that you have to make sure that the jurors are paying attention to the trial and not flitting back and forth between Jennifer Hudson and what's going on during the course of the case. Part of why these jurors were picked is because they were so impassionate during the course of the questioning. They did not get aroused. They didn't in any way seem to say, think that this would ruffle their feathers. And they really did focus on the case. One of the things that we've noticed when we try cases is that juries take these cases very seriously. Once you weed out the star seekers, etc., just like the R. Kelly trial, just like uh, Michael Jackson's doctor, etc., you end up with those people who really do take, take the case seriously. I think that will have an impact on this because they know that they're going to be scrutinized and their decision is going to be scrutinized, but I don't think it's going to overwhelm them. Okay. Yeah. Thomas, always good to get your insights. Yeah. That was breaking down for us very well, sir. Good to see you. Good Thank to you, see Thomas. You again. Yeah, Thank the you. court again gets underway today. Mm -hmm.